face. Let me tell you something about getting old. You wouldn't know it now, but I used to look like this. Just kidding. But I was very fit, uh, due mostly to karate training, and I maintained that fitness into my later years by continued training. Uh, this is how I looked at age 52, practicing with the uh, number one son there. And People still think I'm younger than I am because at 68 years old, I still have only a little gray hair. Uh, my barber's a real wise guy. He said, it's supposed to turn white before it falls out. Funny guy. But just being older and having more fat and less muscle isn't the point. Uh, I'm always talking about how our common sense self-defense course is designed for people who can't do athletic things or, or maybe more specifically, old guys with bad joints. But there's a reason it's designed that way. A few years back, I noticed that most of our dojo members were over 50 years old and uh, had various physical limitations. And then I got a few of my own. I had a urinary obstruction that damaged my kidneys. And uh, let me tell you what kidney disease does to your karate. First of all, your kidneys filter waste, so when they're damaged, it's like the garbage collection comes less and less often to your house. Lots of things can happen from there. You have decreased protein synthesis that leads to muscle wasting, which is why I don't look like those old pictures anymore. It interferes with skin regeneration and turns a little cut while shaving into a big ordeal. Or scraping yourself on the makiwara. Uh, I wish I had bought stock in liquid bandage, I can tell you that. Healing time is greatly increased. Take a look at these bruises from a light poke during training. This is day 10, if you can believe that. And kidney disease can even cause demineralization of the bones, which is why uh, I don't hit bricks anymore, and I hope they don't hit me. When your kidneys are functioning properly, they create a hormone called erythropoietin. As your doctor for the moment, I'll refer to it as EPO. EPO tells the body to create the oxygen-carrying red blood cells that you need to carry energy and nutrients around the body. With kidney damage, you can suddenly become really, really tired. And your muscles would be like lead. And uh, when your kidneys stop producing EPO, this can result in a condition called anemia. You've probably heard of it. It's a, simply a condition um, where there aren't enough red blood cells in the body uh, and also a, a lack of iron often as well. You feel cold easily because the lack of red blood cells means that you aren't getting enough energy to heat yourself up and your circulation will be reduced, which is why I feel lousy in the winter. When you don't have enough EPO, you're the resulting uh, low blood cell uh, count means you won't feel as if you're getting enough oxygen to the brain, also to the muscles and organs. But less oxygen to the brain means you also get brain fog. And that's why I make dumb mistakes, like repeating myself often. I also repeat myself often. The response to this lack of oxygen is that the body makes you start breathing faster and more heavily and you might feel uh, that you're constantly out of breath as a result. So much for the former athletic knee with the fast recovery time and the 56 pulse rate. Some of you may have heard about competitive athletes taking EPO, uh, cheating by taking EPO, which will give them the opposite effect, boundless energy. I ain't got no boundless energy. This is enhanced by a buildup of fluid in the body, uh, which can end up affecting the lungs, but it will also cause the feet, ankles, and hands to swell up. And this is one of the most common and well-known symptoms of kidney disease, and you probably know this. When the kidneys stop removing the extra fluid, this can also cause it to build up in the face. So if you see someone with puffy eyes and cheeks like mine, uh, they may have kidney disease.
This can appear like weight gain, which I have cleverly disguised with real weight gain. Now, if this was not enough to foul up my karate prowess, I had something devastating happen during the course of this time. After surgery to relieve the obstruction that affected my kidneys, I took a common antibiotic called Cipro. Drugs in this class, they're called fluoroquinolones, are, are notorious for causing connective tissue damage. Tendons and ligaments lose their tone and sometimes rupture without doing anything. There are uh, hundreds of people who have been crippled by these drugs. I guess it's uh, poetic justice for a doctor to be one of them. The result of this is my knees and my thumb joints are unstable. The first knee injury I got in my life happened when I was about to take a step and suddenly my leg gave way and tore the cartilage. I wasn't kicking or lunging or anything, just standing there. My CMC joints, uh, these, these rear thumb joints, dislocate every so often. And uh, consider that I had many years of strengthening them with traditional karate exercises. So I found myself very much like an old man who had never trained at all. In this state, it became easier to see what kind of self-defense techniques did not require gymnastic ability and, uh, and wouldn't take more out of you than it gave back to you. I went back to early karate methods and found that the old techniques were still effective even if you couldn't bend your knees all the way or jump or breathe deeply. I knew I was absolutely not going to lose my self-defense ability just because I had some damage. I would find a way to still be effective. And moreover, I would make it available to others who would never end up in a karate school or those who thought they could never go back to one. I used this litmus test. If you can lift your leg enough to get in a car, you can do all the stances and kicks that we do. If you're slow as molasses, it doesn't matter. We'll show you how to position yourself to get that strike in, regardless of what your attacker is doing. An old, out-of-shape guy can do it. Look at this. This white-haired gentleman has no intention of letting the guy get his cash, even though the guy threatens to stab him. He knows he can beat him. Come on, come on, he says. And uh, another old fellow attacked. He's, he says, I'm going to hurt you. Mr. Sloppy Pants is going to get it. Down he goes. And the old guy doesn't have to jump, spin, kick, or squat. Isn't that beautiful? And who knows, maybe the old guy even took Cipro. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of glad this happened to me because my self-defense ability is better than before. I don't mind so much being a tired old karate guy now. I get to mix with some really great people who are also old or physically deficient in some way. Find out how you can join the party at karatehack.net. And while you're doing that, I'll take a nap.